today I'm sharing what we have done in our school year so far and what has worked and what hasn't worked. Welcome back to Candlewick Library. I'm Cheryl and today, like I said in the intro, I'm sharing what we've done in school this year so far and what we have liked and what we haven't liked. I'm going to start with the subjects my daughters do and then I'll go into the subjects we do together. So first, I'm going to start with my older daughter, Abigail, who is in 12th grade. I really felt like with one daughter being in 12th grade and one daughter being in 8th grade that their work needed to be more independent than we have been doing it the last few years. So in the summer I took all their subjects and I, I did a basic overview of the whole year and then I took the book, most of the books, apart and put them into weekly folders that I keep in a file box. So then I have my Fox Hall Academy where I keep those pages that show that overview of the whole year of what we're doing together and what each girl is doing. And then I plan out our actual weeks from those pages and I put those into my normal planner. At the beginning of the year, I started with the whole term because that's what I've done in the past. This year we had a few things come up that made us want to change some things around and then we all got sick and so then I really had to change some things around. So moving forward, I'm only going to move the plans from the binder to my planner for two weeks at a time and that should make that process easier if unexpected things come up. You'd think after six years I would have figured that out by now, but every year I think we are tweaking this homeschool thing. From my planner, I have these little flexi binders for each girl. At the beginning of their little binder, I have a weekly checklist. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and I plan out everything for them. And if any of their work has worksheets, then those worksheets are behind a tab in this binder. If it's something that they work out of the book, then it won't be in there. And it's only a week at a time, so on the weekends, I can go back in here and I can take everything out, correct things, and, and I put all of the work in an accordion file where I keep that by each subject for each girl. And then I put the new stuff in for the next week. I have really loved these weekly binders for them. I, I feel like it has really given them the independence of looking at what they have going on for the week and deciding, okay, yeah, I'm gonna follow exactly what mom wrote in here and I'm gonna do this Monday, this Tuesday, this Thursday, this Friday. Some weeks they've wanted to do it differently. They have something going on on one day and so they don't want as much work that day. So they'll really do a lot of it on a different day. And I've told them before, yeah, you can do all your math one day, all your language arts one day, all of your science one day, if you want, it's up to you. This just shows you what needs to be done by the end of the week. So I think that's worked out really well. So now I'm going to go through Abby's subjects that she does by herself. For science this year, she's been doing Master Books, Wonders of the Human Body. So far, she's in part one, and this is actually a full year course, but she's doing it faster. So she's going to be doing volume one and volume two this year, which is a pretty heavy load of it, but she's doing really well and she's learning a lot. Since I file their work away in an accordion file, there are some subjects that I feel like they still need access to those worksheets as they go along for quizzes and tests and things like that. So they each have a science binder as well, this is hers, so that all of that is available after I've corrected it and she can go back to it as much as she wants. I feel like this course is better than anything I ever did in biology in high school when I was a teenager. So she's really getting a good overview of everything and she's enjoying it. I already shared her literature course and this has been going really well. She hasn't enjoyed everything she's had to read. There's some things that afterwards she'll say, I have no idea what any of that meant which I think is pretty normal for some of the things that I've been having her read in there, some of the older poetry and the older essays and things like that. So along with that, I'm gonna share the reads she's read with that so far. The first one that she read was The Classic Starts, Robinson Crusoe, which she did not like. Now, would she have liked the original better? I don't know. I kind of felt like when I read it that she wouldn't, and that's why I gave her The Classic Starts, so that she would get the story, she would understand it. If she did like the Classic Start version, because I feel like it was a really well done Classic Start, that then she could go on and read the full one, but she's not going to because she didn't enjoy this. Next, she read Sense and Sensibility and she loved it. It was pretty fun because my personal favorites are Northanger Abbey and Sense and Sensibility. And so far, those are my daughter Abigail's favorites as well. And so that's been kind of fun to have conversations about it. When she finished it, we watched the 1990s version of Sense and Sensibility and that was so much fun too. She really enjoyed that as well. And we were able to talk about the things that were different and the things that were the same. Next, she read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow right at Halloween and she did not like this. <laughs> she he said that she didn't feel like it had any uh, literary or moral value. So I guess we know what she thinks of that. Uh, next was The Scarlet Letter and I gave that to her in manga form and she did enjoy that. It wasn't her favorite story ever, but she did enjoy it and that's another one I can't find. 
Then she read The Importance of Being Earnest. I had high hopes for this one because it's my favorite play and I love it so much. She said she felt like it was silly and a good diversion at best. <laughs> and then she read The Count of Monte Cristo and I gave this to her in manga form as well and she absolutely loved this. So I think she is going to read the original of this. Her favorites so far of the school year were Sense and Sensibility and Count of Monte Cristo. Right now she's currently in the middle of Treasure Island and she did say the other day that she was really far ahead because she couldn't stop reading. So I have a feeling this is going to be one that she likes as well. For her spelling we've been continuing with Spelling Power which she started a few years ago. She's only got about five or six weeks worth of spelling left in this before she's completely done with this whole book. On Monday I tell her the list and, we, and she actually has me test her on it right then. If she gets any wrong, she has me test her again at the end of the week. So she is a very gifted natural speller. And in fact, we just do it out loud. We don't have her write it down. I just, it's a verbal test. In my opinion, spelling verbally is harder than spelling on paper. And so I figure if she can spell it out loud, then she could spell it on paper. Her math, it is not in this room right now, but she is doing algebra one for, with Life of Fred. And she's also using Life of Fred for financial choices. This is the first year ever that math has been challenging for her. It's always come pretty easy. And so she's having a hard time with the idea that algebra doesn't come to her as easy as everything else did. She still is really enjoying Life of Fred. And the financial choices she's really enjoying as well. Both of my daughters are doing the Master Books Cursive program. It's for younger kids. But last year, Abigail told me that she felt like she really needed a refresher on cursive. Up until this point, they had done the Good and the Beautiful cursive and handwriting programs. And I think that those are good and I, their presentation is very cute. But I noticed that in the cursive, each time, each year, it looks like that they're doing a different style. And so I think it confused my kids a little bit. She wanted a refresher and my youngest daughter needed a refresher. And so I just decided to get this cutesy one when I was at homeschool, a homeschool convention last summer and just have them go through all the basics. I don't think either one of them enjoy it, even though she asked for it. I think now it's just kind of tedious to her, but it is helping her. They're both doing it really well. So I think it was still a good choice, even though it is so young for them. She is also continuing on with her Japanese. She has used these books, Japanese from Zero, and they are remarkable. They have helped her so much. She's taught herself completely. And she has had a conversation with a Japanese woman that her grandmother knows. And that woman did comment on how well she speaks. But here in our home, she'll do Japanese karaoke and sing in Japanese a lot. And she does it really fast. She watches shows that she likes in Japanese, sometimes with the English subtitles, sometimes without. She still doesn't think she's good enough at it. So we're at this point looking into, okay, what else can we do to help her now that she's finished all of the books that they have? And I feel like she is really solid in Japanese, but she knows that if she went there, it probably wouldn't come as easily as it does when she's home alone watching things and doing things and reading things. I got her the New Testament in Japanese, and so she reads in that every day. And we've bought, and she's going to be getting soon, some more books in Japanese. And so we're just kind of working through that, but those books were a great foundation. And then her other two electives are writing and art, and those are things she just does on her own. We don't have a curriculum. I did uh, share with you guys in another video that I read the book Writer to Writer by Gail Carson Levine, and I am going to be making a creative writing course for the, and for the rest of the school year with that. So I'll share on that later of how that goes. But as right now, for the first part of the school year, she's just been writing her book reports and writing for fun, and she's doing well. She's a very talented writer. And then her art is just the same thing. It's She's drawing all the time when we're doing read-alouds, if we watch movies, things like that. She's always drawing. The one thing that did not at all work for her this year, when we were at the convention and we were at the Master Books uh, booth and I was buying so many other things, I saw the Jensen's grammar, punctuation, and writing and vocabulary. And I decided to get all of those for her. We didn't start the vocabulary yet because I did decide to save that for my younger daughter but I wanted to do the writing and the grammar and the punctuation as a refresher course for her because she finished the Good and the Beautiful high school year. She was done with high school language arts. She could have just been done. She didn't want to graduate early and, and she didn't really want to do dual enrollment either. You know, I'm like, what can I do this year for literature and everything else for language arts that will just put her further along? So I thought, okay, these look really good. So I put together the literature course and then I decided to get those three books, took them all apart and I put them in the accordion file and I got everything planned out. But then when the school year started, we realized very quickly that it was all stuff she already knew and it just felt like busy work. So we decided just to have her stop doing those and just stick with the spelling and the literature and the writing. And I will save those. I might do them with my younger child or they might just be a wash. I'm not sure yet. I hate having spent the money if we don't end up using them, but 
you know, that I guess that is one of the harder parts of homeschool sometimes is that sometimes you buy things and they don't work and you just have to be okay with that. You have to figure it out. That was the one thing that really didn't work out at all for her this year. Now I'm gonna talk about my younger daughter, Madeline. She's been doing eighth grade. So she also has the weekly binder and most of her work is in the weekly binder. So most of it I don't have to hold up because it, they've been taken apart. One of the experts at the convention I talked to suggested that with her, I just kind of take out the grammar and all of that stuff this year uh, in eighth grade and give her a break between the seventh and ninth grade year and bring all of that back for her high school starting next year. And this year, just focus on the basics of writing, spelling, and reading. And I felt like that would really be helpful for her because she is not like my older daughter when it comes to school. She doesn't love school. She doesn't love reading as much. She's really bright and she's really good at doing things, but she just doesn't enjoy it as much. So I felt like she would be very happy that she didn't have to do a ton of things this year. So for her writing, I got the writing strands from Masterbooks. So far she's done beginning one and she's most of the way through beginning two. We're doing it a little differently because the writing strands do have a week of writing and a week of reading. But since I had already had her reading program, we're skipping all of the reading ones and she's just doing writing every week. I have found that there's some weeks when the writing in it is really, really good and other weeks when it's not. And so we've skipped a few weeks, but I think she's enjoying it. I do think that it's helping her to really think about the structure of her sentences that she writes. So I do think it has been a good curriculum so far. So we'll see how it goes the rest of the year. For her spelling, we're using Practical Spelling Grade 8. I just got this off of Amazon. I'll show you one that she hasn't done yet. So it just has the list of spelling words. And then in this unit, for example, it has, it talks about plurals. It asks her to write the plural spelling word after the singular. That forces her to look at harnesses and think, okay, the singular is harness. And it goes through that with all of those. They're all plural words in this particular list. Then it breaks it down even further with the plural words of how is this word made into a plural? Is it with an ES? Is it with just an S? And, then you ha and she has to separate them. And then it asks other questions where she kind of has to go on a little hunt into her list to figure out the words. She's always been a decent speller, but she's never been... Uh, as strong as she is now. This year I've seen so much growth in her spelling. So this has been a really good one. I hope they have them for the higher levels because I do want to stick with this for her. We talked about her literature in another video as well. She's doing original fairy tales and retellings this year. I'll just share the ones she's done so far. She's reading the originals out of this fairy tale book and this Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale book. And I highly recommend both of those. So far she's read three original fairy tales. Princess and the Pea, The Ugly Duckling, and The Snow Queen. And I think she liked them all well enough. So first she read The Princess and the Pea and then A True Princess by Diane Zaylor. She said that she really liked this book until the end, but she did say that she thought that the romance was a little bit cheesy and that she would have liked it better if there was a friendship rather than a romance. Then she read The Ugly Duckling and for that she read A Beautiful Love by Megan Walker and she hated this book. <laughs> she said there were some good things in it that she did like, but for the most part she felt like it was just very dramatic. And then she read Eva Evergreen for the book in between. I think if you watched the literature video, you know that I'm having her do two fairy tales and retellings and then one book that's just kind of random in the middle that I think she'll like to kind of give her a break from fairy tales. And so in October, I had her read Eva Evergreen. I thought she was gonna absolutely love this, but she liked it, but she didn't love it. I think that goes back to the fact that she's just not as much of a reader. She used to be. So I'm trying to kind of help her get back into loving reading. But at this point, there's just so many other things she would rather do that sometimes it's harder for her to sit down and read a big book and enjoy it as much as I would or as my older daughter would. But this little, this little guy is her favorite character. Okay, and then she read The Snow Queen. Right now she's reading Breadcrumbs and so far she thinks it's a little bit too violent. But we'll see what her overall opinion is of when, when she's done. Okay, I already talked about the cursive, so she's also doing that. The same thing goes. I feel like it is kind of busy work and it, and she doesn't love it, but I think it's working well. For math, she's also doing master books and that's been working really well with her. I think it's been her strongest year of math yet. And for science, she's doing the, the general science from master books. And so, so far she's finished the weather and this is going really well too. And then I, I have one elective for her this year, which is just art. Art is her, her love. She is always drawing. She is really, really talented. And so I count that as her elective because she is just always doing it. Now I'm gonna share the subjects we do together. For most of the school year so far, we've been doing Bible at 9 a.m. in the morning and then they do their individual work after that. And then we get back together at one o'clock for what my daughter's called kite time. And that's just an inside joke with them. And that's where we do the things that we used to call morning time. 
but they have both expressed that they want to go back to doing it all in the afternoon so that they have the mornings to sleep in, to do anything that they need to do around the house and to get as much of their work done as they want to in the morning before lunch. And then at one o'clock we do all of the rest, but we still start with Bible. So for Bible, we've been doing the homeschool edition of the Answers in Genesis Bible curriculum. This one is year three. We've been going through them faster than you normally would because of, again, having older kids. And so we finished year three and they don't have year four out yet. So I knew we just had to do something else until year four comes out. When I was trying to decide what Bible curriculum I wanted to use, I bought that one and this one also from Answers in Genesis because we had kind of an adventure thing going on that year. Once they arrived and I was able to look through them, I knew that the other one felt like it would be better for my, my daughters. But I kept this one because I really like it as well. And so when we finished that one, I thought, well, maybe we'll do this one in between uh, finishing year three and when year four comes out. But this really did feel pretty young for them. And I don't think they were enjoying it as much. It, it was very much review of things we'd already talked about very recently. So I put that aside and we started this Foundations in Faith from Israel Wayne that Master Books publishes. And I had also picked this up at the convention last summer. When I looked through it, I felt like it was too much to add as just an elective on top of Bible. So a few weeks ago, I decided, you know what, we're going to do this for Bible and we'll finish this. And then by then year four will be out. So this is what we've been doing the last few weeks and what we'll be continuing to do until we're done with it. It also comes with this Great for God book about different missionaries. And we've only read the introduction so far, but that was really good. So as far as the two curriculum that we've done for Bible this year, we absolutely love this Answers in Genesis Bible. For us, we are relearning Christianity and we are really starting at the beginning. I really need my daughters to have a very good foundation in the Bible. And this has been really, really helpful for that. I think it's been great. They've learned a lot and I, I feel like it's really sound. And then this so far has been wonderful. I am really enjoying this. So I think both of those are great, 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 great Bible curriculum. And then every Monday we've been doing a chapter out of this introduction to logic. It's from Jason Lyle. And I think this is also published. Yeah, this is also published by Master Books. So we started this last school year and then we just finished it a few weeks ago. And this was fantastic. It's definitely a more challenging logic. And there were times when we'd have to like really go deeper into what he was talking about. Okay, okay do we understand this? But they really did. They did really well. Even you know, like my eighth grader would answer questions that I wasn't sure she would know the answer to. And I noticed that ever since we started this that they call me out when I, say something fallacious. So it definitely, they are definitely learning and I really, really enjoyed it. I want to continue with fallacies so that they don't just forget everything they learned. So we're going to be reading a Tuttle Twins book about them when we start up school again. And I will probably have Maddie, my younger daughter, do the course again by herself in a couple of years because we didn't mark up the books because I knew I might want to do that. Another course we've been doing together this year for Master Books is Biblical Archaeology. And we do this every Tuesday. My mom is actually doing this with us. So every Tuesday afternoon, my mom has been coming over and, and I read the chapters and we go through. Because we're only doing it once a week, we sometimes do one or two worksheets a week. So far, we've gone through the archaeology book that was an introduction to archaeology. We finished that one. And right now, we're a couple chapters into Unwrapping the Pharaohs. And while I've liked both of them, and I feel like the course has been really, really good so far, I am enjoying this one even more. I like this book better of the two so far. I think everybody's enjoying it. I know my mom has said many times that she's really, really learning a lot and enjoying it. I love archaeology. It is something I thought about doing, but didn't. And I love, and it's one of my buzzwords for books. I love books about archeology. span And so I'm really enjoying delving into this with my mom and my daughters. And I think this course and these books are done really, really well. For history this year, we've been doing From Adam to Us, part one, creation to cathedrals from not grass history. They have a few history levels that are older, but when I looked through them, I just really felt like this was the one to go with. This particular level is more geared toward my younger daughter's age group, but I felt like it would be good to gear it toward her and my older daughter, because my older daughter's had so many years of history already and this is just adding things to it. However, once we started doing this year, I've actually realized that my older daughter is learning more from this than she did from her other histories. So I think this is a win. They're written like a textbook form, but the pictures are all in color and they're really beautifully done. I really love it. They also have activities at the back that you can do 
We haven't done any of those because I do feel like those are geared more toward younger kids. But what we do with it is they each have their lesson review book and this has their lesson, a little review for every single lesson and it has their test in it. And there's also read alouds that go with it. We haven't done all of them. When we do read a read aloud along with a unit, then it has a place to fill in questions or answers for questions for that as well. And so they each have one of those and then they each have a timeline. And I've done Book of Centuries in the past but this I like better because it's got the pictures and everything set up and then it has the little squares for them to fill out. And they, it's a lot easier, but it's also really, it's really pleasing to look at. It comes with our creative world that has different poems and folk stories and different things from different time periods. And then they also have a map book where they do map projects. So we only have one more unit left of part one creation to cathedrals. And so next semester we will be working, we will be moving into part two castles to computers. I definitely will be moving forward with this history because I have really loved it. And I think that they've learned more, like I said, than they have with any of the other histories that we've done. And I believe that they're enjoying it more. Now for our, with hymn study this year, I'm using this book, Our Hymns and Heritage. I usually pick a hymn for about two weeks and I copy it out of this book and then put it into their little weekly binders and then we find a video on YouTube that I like of it and we sing along with it a couple times a week. I love that this has the backstory of the songs and the people that wrote them. As far as the books we've read together for read alouds for school, I think I've, I've mentioned at least a few of these already, but Martin Luther Reformation Fire, that was really good. We liked that. We just finished William Bradford, Plymouth Rock. And this was funny because this book got boring a couple of times, a little bit dry a couple of times, but overall it was really good. But what was really funny is that we have a couple of ancestors in this book. One of them was a pilgrim and another one was somebody that came later. And I didn't know that particular person was gonna be in this book. And I was like, oh, that's the same name as our ancestor. And then it talked about his home. And I'm like, hey, that is our ancestor. And then it proceeded to have <laughs> stories about him that were not very positive. And I had never heard that story before. So that was really funny. Um, I think we all kind of got a kick out of that. It was an interesting book. We just read this little Alfred the Great book. It was a very simple little book, just a little bit of information about him. Very cute little story, but not necessarily something where you're gonna learn a ton about him. We're still in the middle of Trial and Triumph. We read from this occasionally and we love it. And we're still in the middle of the Major Wars History Bites from Solomon Schmidt. And this also has been good. We just finished You're Not Enough and That's Okay from Ali Stuckey. I really loved reading through this again with my daughters. I think that there were parts that they didn't like and then there were parts that they did. But overall, I think it was, it made for really good discussions. In my reading wrap up videos, I also talked about the Bronze Bow already and the Canterville Ghost already. So those were both good read alouds. In the past, all of the geography we've tried have pretty much been fails for us. Not because they were necessarily a bad curriculum, but because they just didn't work with my daughters. We would start something and really like it and then it would fizzle out and they didn't enjoy it. But they still wanted to do geography and I still feel like it's important. When we were at the convention, I saw this child's geography exploring medieval kingdoms from master books and it caught my attention because New Schwanstein was on it and I've been there and I was pretty excited. And as I went through it, I was like, this is so good. I really love this geography. But that was volume four and I bought it anyway. But then when, we, when I got home, I thought, okay, we can't start at volume four. We've got to go back to the beginning. And since my kids are older and it is geared a little bit young, I feel like we can move through it quicker like we've been doing with other things. And so we started with the first volume, Explore His Earth, and it was so much fun. And that was less about geography of other countries and stuff. It's just like learning about the earth. So it kind of felt like science. And then we moved on to volume two, Explore the Holy Land. And I felt like that was really appropriate because we finished this up right before Christmas break. And again, we just, we learned so much. You're not just learning about the map, but you're learning about the countries and the culture and the cities and the things that are there and the food they eat and all that. And you can do the extra activities, making the food, doing crafts, but we don't. We just read about it and then they fill out the reviews at the end and we do little tests and things. But I've really loved this and I feel like at their ages, it's actually working really well to go through it so fast as well. For home ec this year, I really wanted to do this culinary life skills. This is from Abeka. And I do think it's well done, but we're having a hard time sticking to it. So I think this is a good resource. The jury's still out on it completely. And then finally, we have two more things that we stopped doing this year. So the first was Uncle Sam and You, part one, and this is from Not Grass, from the history we really like. And it's not because I don't like this curriculum. It's teaching about civics and government, and I think it's really well done, just like the history. 
but there is a lot of information and I realized this was gonna be really overwhelming to try to do this in a full year with both girls. So I am saving this and I'm gonna have my younger daughter do this next year and the year after over the course of the two years independently because I think that that will work out better and my older daughter can read through them as well if she wants to. I, I don't feel like this one lended itself to me reading aloud to them as well and to one year. The last one was this, the For You They Signed with the Christian Heritage thing with Masterbooks. So this has all the stories of the different signers of the Declaration of Independence. And so I had printed out a map and I printed out pictures of them and we were putting the states on this little whiteboard in here and putting the pe people around it as we learned about it but I found that I was bored while I was reading it out loud to them. It wasn't because the men aren't interesting and, and, and have great stories. It was just, I, I don't like the way it was written as well. And I feel I might have my younger daughter try reading through this and doing it on her own because it might be the process, it might be just reading it out loud that doesn't work as well, but I'm just not sure. I think it's a really good resource to have. So if we ever need to uh, find out more about somebody, we have this, we can run and get it, but it just wasn't working. So that is an overview of our school year so far. I feel like it's been a really good and strong school year so far. We're taking winter break now and we won't be going back to school until the second week of January. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's gonna be good to have Christmas and then have enough time to relax between Christmas and New Year's and then have a week to start planning again and getting everything ready for the next term of school. If you have any questions about any of these things, let me know. I'll probably do another video like this in the spring and then one at the very end of the school year to kind of follow up on all of these things that we're still doing and the things that we do later. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this and that it was helpful.